Well, hello and welcome. It is the World Mission Update Podcast. I'm Rusty Humphreys. That guy is Greg Kelly. And welcome. And man, um, we haven't done a lot of podcasts recently because there's a lot of things been going on in the background. And I thought it'd be kind of fun. Greg and I haven't even talked about this. And I thought we'd just kind of do it together with you watching and stuff. So, Greg, first of all, good to see you. It's been a while. Good to see you, buddy. Did you have, uh, how were the holidays and everything? Everything go well? Everything was groovy. Thank you. Except okay. I have never, it's the first of my life, never not been accepted into a country before. What? I'm not wanted. Come on. not Who would not want you, Rusty? I just got to know. Well, we are supposed to go to, you're, you're leaving for Pakistan when? Um, in 24 hours, 24 hours, I was supposed to go with you and they went, yeah, we don't want you. So I Something am not, like I am not allowed <laughs> to get to go to Pakistan. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah. We kind of had to make a decision there. The, the, it's, it's, uh, you know, with the COVID and with all the challenges of traveling, your, your, every country has its own sort of rules and it's not COVID. Um, it's not COVID in that case, but no, the, no. the delay in going was very much COVID because mm -hmm. you're not, you're just not sure, is there going to be quarantine involved? Is there, you know, how, how are they handling things as far as your tests and um, 72 hours, 48 hours, just, just a lot of sort of moving parts. So, um, <laughs> and some countries have it, you go there and, and I'm still, I'm trying to read, cause we're going to go to India next and I'm trying to read the stuff to me. It looks like, you have to quarantine for seven days, but I could be misreading things. So it's, a, I, I can't figure it out. Yeah. It's really, but, hard. it's, it's a hard time, Rusty. I mean, you yeah. do international travel there. There's, we actually had another trip that was planned to go to Bangladesh. One of your favorite places in the yeah. world to go to. Yes. We, we ended up pulling the plug on that one for these very reasons. Cause there was a 14 day, uh, mandatory, um, quarantine that they just announced. So, you know, some of these are kind of with a grain of salt. It's like, uh, under certain, certain circumstances, they're applying the letter of the law. And other times there's some liberties that are taken and some grace, but it's, it's tricky to invest like you do when you go on these trips, your time and your, your money, when there's so much uncertainty. So that's, that's what we're dealing with. Well, and the Pakistan thing, I believe I probably wasn't accepted because I used to be a journalist. Um, and they probably don't like journalists or they're weary of journalists or whatever that was. And, and I didn't want to do anything that would put anybody in jeopardy or the trip in jeopardy. So I didn't fight it and bowed out and that's fine. Um, but man, it's tough. It's not like, Hey, can I go? Yes or no. It, it took an hour and a half to fill out all the paperwork online to do these these visas they're not playing around no. and then it's like um what was some of the crazy questions they asked oh they wanted to know how many bank accounts i had mm -hmm. and where i got my money and what job and my previous not only my current employer but previous employers um is that normal I think just in the the environment that we're in right now, especially you've got so this it's a majority Muslim country, obviously. Um, the the whole Afghanistan thing and the floods of refugees coming in, um, there's suspicion that is unique to this time that we're in for sure. So I want I don't know if I'd necessarily say that's normal. I think depending on what country, but here's the thing: all of the countries are being affected by. COVID and people not traveling. So uh, some countries are giving like an allotment of 500 free visas a day. So you don't have to pay anything because they want people to come into their country and countries in Asia, countries nearby where uh, we'll be traveling um, have put those kind of things in place because their economies are being devastated. Yeah. So they really want people to come in. But um, at the same time, there's a lot of suspicion, I think, um, when you have uh, mass amounts of refugees and, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad actors that are that are coming into places like Pakistan that are that are causing harm and stirring up trouble. And so they're trying they're trying to balance those two worlds together. Yeah. The other thing that was fascinating to me was, 
okay, in this time of COVID, you can normally cancel your plane tickets and get a refund, especially a you know, place like Pakistan. Yeah, sorry. You can't get your money back from Pakistan. Sorry. <laughs> I, I know. I don't. I, I mean, it's just, you know, you, you would think that when someone would be going on a shorter duration trip, mm -hmm. uh, if there's a mandatory vaccine, you think that would trigger some kind of a reimbursement. But I think you know, they're saying, well, Hey, it's not that you can't go there. Well, it's, it totally is un impractical for you to go. If you're just there for a week or two, if the whole time you got to be in a court, well, and if they didn't give me a visa, that's pretty much, you can't go. Can't go. Can't yeah. go. All right. Yeah. So, um, so, who knows, Rusty? okay. Oh, um, and then, so we are going to meet up in India, meeting up in India, which Delhi. is interesting. Yeah. And Soon to be the largest uh, city in the world. Rusty, is that that's right? where we're meeting up. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, in the next 20 cool. years, Delhi will be the largest city in the world. Now, I bought a new drone because I could take the drone into Pakistan. I wanted to get some great video. Can't go to Pakistan. India can't bring me down. So. <laughs> All right. Really? That's what yeah. they, they said. No go, huh? No, no, no. As a matter of fact, foreigners cannot fly drones in India. Oh, okay. So, well. But I did get something new. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, hold on. Oh, so these buddy. glasses... I can take video, and so now you can see what I'm seeing in the yeah. camera. And so when we're out doing stuff, Greg, you're just going to be the camera's right. No, it's right here. Yeah, it's on. It's on your right. It's on the right side. Oh, you right? can see it. Yeah, is okay. that on the right side? Yeah, oh, yeah there sure. it is. Oh, there's a little light. Yeah, there, there we now. go. The okay, thing that's the, new the, on these with ones. The white flashing light is that the camera? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Right. so yeah, I can't even in. tell it's there. I can't even tell. It looks well, it's like invisible. Are you like laughing at me or what? <laughs> well, the lights, well, the light, right. there's a light directly in it now too. So I don't oh, okay, know. But anyway, right. okay. I it's just cool. thought it'd be cool Super that cool. we are able to take video while you're like doing stuff. I can like, yeah. you know, take video and not, not bother anybody. Not be so obvious. I love it. I love so, it. Yeah, I'm, we'll well, I'm not trying to be secretive. It's just people. sometimes you got to get the camera, you got to pull it out and you got to do all kinds of stuff. And now ah. it's just all right here. High definition. Uh, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Is, huh? I can't wait. We're going to. All right. So I had another pair of these glasses um, and I lost them oh, in man. Spain, but it did Dude. not have this light like this. So this is, uh, I just got this, these today. Yeah, that, that yeah. is awesome. That is awesome. I can't wait to see the footage that you're going to be getting from that all, all in secrecy. And we're going to be no, like I'm James not trying Bond, to be man. secret -y. What? I'm just, Although there's a couple times when you're out talking to people up close and they get nervous if I have a ca you know a camera in their face. When we were in Chitty Gong, I was getting a little bit nervous. I know you got the most nervous when we were in Pocot when you thought those guys were going to jam a spear in my back. But actually, I was. Well, totally you didn't know because you didn't see it. Was I was totally you. comfortable with that. I had yeah. my my instincts were telling me we're fine. Right. I could see terror in your face. But Chitty Gong, when we were surrounded by all those people on the streets, that was a different deal. That, that, was, that, that, that had me was a little, little bit nervous. Yeah, a little, little bit nervous. nervous. Okay, so where? So we're doing Pakistan, doing India. What is the mission here for World Mission? Well, those are two big places that uh, we've been working and have this amazing network of international partners that are serving. Um, Pakistan is obviously a place um, where because of what's going on with Afghanistan, there's a lot of need that's pouring across that, that border uh, into Pakistan, seeking refuge. Um, people are being hunted down to continue to this day. Christians are on these lists, Rusty. They're going around, and they are especially, um, the most recent information has been young leaders. Um, I, think, I think there's this idea of what do you revolution. mean by young leaders? What's your what's your definition? About, there? Think of pastors, um, young Christian leaders who are in their early twenties, um, serving the Lord, want to be a pastor or you know missionary, sharing the gospel. There are um, there's there's a lot of fear by the Taliban and leaders uh, inside of Afghanistan that there'll be some kind of revolution. Now, when I say that. Those of us who are followers of Jesus would say, yes, a revolution, which would be, i.e., revival. And that's what they're afraid of. They know that as the gospel goes forth, and they've heard of neighboring countries, that it's like a fire, and it spreads. And we're actually seeing that. We're hearing that despite all of the atrocities that are going on. But, uh, Rusty, i got to tell you one quick story, um, because it's not just the gospel changing hearts, but it's God working really supernaturally. There was this woman 
who lost her husband, which unfortunately is, is not an uncommon story that we'll hear. This guy was in the military and the Afghan military had a very successful position. Uh, and when, you know, after August 30, after the pullout, this guy, among many others who served in the Afghan military, sort of against the Taliban, were, were very much targeted. And this guy being a high profile person, they really had their eyes on him. He was on their hit list. He went to the market one day with three of their four children. And as he was coming home, his bomb, bomb exploded his car. Oh, uh, no. So, you know, the, the, the widow was devastated. Uh, our people there that we work with on the ground, they were aware of her situation, really tried to rally around her, encourage her. But she was, I mean, just imagine, I mean, she's devastated. She's lost the majority of those in her world that she loved and cared for and really got super depressed and on the verge of being suicidal. And so one day when she did ultimately decide to take her life, she walked to the highest building nearby that she didn't know, but other refugees had lived there and refugees who had received the treasure. She walks oh, up to the wow. third story to jump off. And right as she's getting ready to jump, one of the treasures was up there that a refugee had been, had been listening to who wasn't there. There was ah. nobody there and this treasure went off and it went off to a verse in Isaiah. Um, I will, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You know, uh, one of those encouraging verses of God just coming alongside his people and comforting them. And she heard that in her own language and it just so gripped her. And then, you know, basically the other people had, you know, come to her, her aid and started encouraging her. And That's right now they're awesome. just loving on her. Uh, so, you know, th th those things, that's just God. It's just God working in the midst of um, utter chaos and despair and showing his love to people. So we're encouraged by all those things, which obviously motivates us to send more treasures into Pakistan and Afghanistan. Absolutely. And, and are you nervous? I mean, Pakistan, um, pretty scary place. India, I'm not so worried about. Pakistan can be scary. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of, you know, anytime you're in these, uh, you know, majority Muslim areas in that corridor of the world. So you've got Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, they all kind of are clustered together west to east. Um, and, you know, there's there's some for sure some bad stuff in there. But as you know, that's why World Mission goes there. I mean, we go where the gospel's never been. That's our tagline, uh, taking the gospel where it's never been. And so, we have to be a part of, and it's not about me going. I mean, I, there are a lot of these countries I've never been to, but that doesn't mean we don't have ministry there because of these international partners that are on the ground. So any chance I can get Rusty to spend time with these international leaders, um, I jump at that opportunity. And you know, the last two years have been like torture for me because I've been. Right. It's been I say, yeah, he's, he was telling me everybody's sitting around and they're all scared of traveling. I can't wait. I'm going, you're going crazy. You're ready to get uh, out there. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't wait. And it's because of these people. You know, these people are my heroes. Um, they are courageous. They are bold. Like I've, I've never been around in my life. I mean, I, I walk alongside these people and you feel like you're walking alongside heroes of the faith you know, of the, of the Bible. I mean, that's these, it's that level of inspiration. And so anything we can do, it's very humbling to think you're going to come alongside of them and, you know, give them a word of encouragement just by, you know, we talk about the power of presence on some of these trips. We're not big on short-term mission trips. That's a, that's a whole different story. There's, there's purpose in there and there's value in them. I think it gets way overused from a strategic plan. It's not a real strategic um, let's go over there and, you know, fix these people and, and take the gospel when you can mobilize um, resources that are already domestic. Like I said, it's a whole different conversation. Um, that being said, though, Rusty, the power of presence is monumentally important. And what I mean by that is you and I going over there and just coming along, just being sharing, breaking bread with these people, encouraging them, praying with their family. Um, just just fellowshipping with them because these these oral cultures, uh, fellowship is just the, you know, it's the foundation of life. Really, they do it so much better than we do in our Western culture. We're so individual. Because I was conf I was confused for a minute there. I thought you when you said power of presence, we were going to be bringing like Xboxes and 
uh, video games and oh yeah, yeah, believe it or not, they yeah they <laughs> different kind of presents, different kind of it's breaking bread, <laughs> drinking tea, being there, um, singing being there. songs together, yeah. sitting around the fire. Yeah, that. Ha- have you been to Pakistan before? I know you've never. been to India. Never, never, never been to Pakistan. But we've done ministry there for fifteen years. Wow. Uh, so we've been very we've distributed thousands of treasures in Pakistan. And of course, we know that the power of the Holy Spirit convicts people, but it's such a threat, Rusty, to these other cultures, and India included, uh, Pakistan included, Iran included, Iraq included. That's why Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world. It's because that truth is a threat. And that's what we do at World Mission. We simply deliver the truth of the Word of God to people's hearts. All right. Well, if you want to be a part of delivering the truth to people's hearts, the truth of the Word of God to people's hearts, we could use your help at worldmission.cc. Uh, worldmission.cc is the website you can go and donate where the Spirit leads you. And it's uh, $40 to get a treasure into someone's hands. And it's not easy. I mean, it's, you know, $40. Uh, it is amazing how far that goes, but certainly could use a lot more because it does change lives. And it's not just one life. It changes, you know, tens, dozens, hundreds, thousands, depending on how many we get out there. Right, Greg? That's right. That's right. And, you know, Rusty, this area, I'm, I am so excited about this area of the world, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, right? Those five countries literally border each other. Um, there's no greater need. Um, it's it's an easy case to make that these are the most unreached areas when you bring them together of any five countries in the world. And so from that reason, all of us as followers of Jesus have that responsibility. Now, we, Rusty and I are, aren't asking you guys to go. Pray for us. And yeah, what if you sent $40? Someone might hear about Jesus because of that $40. In fact, I can guarantee that would happen because that's where we send the treasures. That's where we take the treasures. So, and yeah, the only thing I can say to that is, as Greg says, we're not asking you to go, and you're welcome. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm guessing they're not going to be a five star uh, Hiltons where we're headed. You mean like we did in Bangladesh? You mean, or, or is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Or are, you, are you referring to Pocot area? Well, no, we stay modestly, but I will say this, Rusty, we stay comfortably in the context in which we go, which is a pretty rough context. It is. And again, I'll tell quick, quickly, I'll tell the story. There's, there's a line in the sand. I didn't think I'd ever have to cross, (laughs) but at one point I went, you know what, Greg, that's it. There's the line. I'm getting myself my own hotel. I'll see y'all later. (laughs) Still feel bad about that. Oh, Rusty, I love you, man. I love you, brother. Uh, All right. You're real, Rusty. That's why everybody loves you. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Worldmission.cc is uh, where to go to uh, check out what World Mission does. And I can't tell you when the next show is going to be. We're going to uh, go to these places and take video and tell you stories when we get back it may take a couple of weeks but please make sure you hit the subscribe button the notification button so you don't miss these upcoming shows because i'm sure uh they are going to be absolutely amazing yeah yeah there's gonna be good stuff we're gonna we're gonna get some great footage even though rusty won't be with me in pakistan we'll get some great interviews and videos that we'll be able to share on the world mission update and certainly when rusty and i are together in India. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun to bring it back to everybody, Rusty. Amen. Amen, brother. All right. Worldmission.cc. For Greg Kelly, I'm Rusty Humphreys, and this is the World Mission Update.